Welcome to Electron Online. Here's our next example of how to use torque to solve a problem like this. We have a very big fish with a weight of 5,000 newtons hanging from the end of this beam. The beam is 2 meters long and it makes an angle of 30 degrees relative to the vertical and it's attached to the hinge here at the bottom. Let's call that pivot point A. And then we have a cable that's holding up the beam and the fish with an angle of 20 degrees relative to the horizontal. And we're trying to find the tension in the cable. Since everything is at its equilibrium, we can say that the sum of all the torque about point A must add up to zero. Let's find all the torques contributing to this problem. First of all, we have the weight of the beam, which acts at the center of mass of the beam at the halfway point, and pulling down in this direction, that's the weight of the beam. And then we have the weight of the fish, pulling down in this direction, and then we have the tension of the cable. So those are the three forces causing the three torques. Also, we need to recognize that each of the forces will have a distance relative to the pivot point, and we'll get to that in just a moment. What we need to do next is sum up all the torques. Zero will be equal to, starting with the weight of the beam, times the perpendicular, oh, and wait a minute, since that, is a fo that force acts in this direction, causes a clockwise torque, that's a negative torque, we need a negative in front here, that's a negative weight of the beam, times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, that's this distance right here, let's call that distance one minus the weight of the fish, because again, the fish, the torque of the fish causes a uh, clockwise direction here, uh, that's a clockwise force, that's a negative torque, and we have the weight of the fish times the perpendicular distance, d2, from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, and then plus, because the tension causes a counterclockwise torque, that's a positive torque, the tension times now in this case, to find the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point would be rather difficult. What we can do instead is find the perpendicular distance by doing this. We find the perpendicular line to the beam, and then we realize that the direction of the tension relative to the perpendicular to the beam is this angle right here. Since this angle here is 30 degrees, that means the total angle here must be 30 degrees as well, which means that this angle must be a 10 degree angle. Notice that if this is perpendicular to the dashed pink line, and this is perpendicular to the horizontal line, then this 30 degree angle must be equal to this 30 degree angle, 30 minus 20 is 10 degrees. And we can find the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point by taking the length of the beam where the cable is attached to times L times the cosine of the angle between the perpendicular and the direction of the tension. It's an easier way to find the torque caused by the, the tension. Now we're ready to plug in the numbers and see what we get. Zero is equal to minus the weight of the beam, that's a thousand newtons times d1. Now d1 is this distance. We can find that by realizing that this here is a 30 degree angle because those are alternate interior angles. The hypotenuse is half the length of the beam and d1 is opposite the 30 degree angle. That means d1 can be expressed as L divided by 2 times the sine of 30 degrees minus the weight of the fish, 5,000 newtons, times d2 D2 can be found by considering this triangle right here. The length of the beam is a hypotenuse. This angle is also 30 degrees. And you can see that D2 can now be expressed as the hypotenuse L times the sine of 30 degrees because it's opposite to the angle. So here we can say that D2 is the full length of the beam times the sine of 30 degrees. Plus the tension times the length of the beam times the cosine of 10 degrees. The cosine of 10 degrees is right there. Okay. Now notice that since this is set equal to zero, every term has an L in it. We can cancel out the L's. This L, this L, and this L cancels out. And now we have to solve for uh, T. We can move everything else over to the other side and turn the equation around. T times the cosine of 10 degrees is equal to 1,000 divided by 2, that's 500 newtons. Notice that 
I moved everything to the other side so the negatives become positive. I turned the equation around. 500 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees plus 5,000 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. I can combine this. I can say that T times a cosine of 10 degrees is equal to 5,500 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees. And finally, by dividing both sides by the cosine of 10 degrees, the tension is equal to 5,500 newtons times the sine of 30 degrees divided by the cosine of 10 degrees. Now we need a calculator. 5,500 newtons times the sine of 30 and divide by the cosine of 10. And we end up with 2,000. The tension is therefore equal to 2,792 newtons. And that's how that problem is done.